We're victims of our own success, right? Because we've built these amazing things and they're good things to have, right? Yeah. Having a power yeah. grid is good. But we've got to also be smart. And one of the things we're finally starting to realize, at least in the UK, where we went super crazy on this net zero stuff is you have to produce your own energy. You have to have control of that. Otherwise, where are you buying it from? Who are you buying it from? And what are they going to do to use the fact that you're buying the energy from them against you? Yeah. And it's uh, there's so many problems. There's so many problems with just the way human beings acquire minerals that need to go into cell phones. Mm. The, 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 the cobalt problem. like The fact that everybody's phone has this element in it that comes from p people literally digging it out of the ground in mines that are working in like the most horrible conditions imaginable and that this has been documented mm. <sighs> and lithium too yep lithium too i mean a lot of the lithium that actually we need is in eastern ukraine it's one of the reasons that, that shit is going on i think it was going to be the second biggest producer of lithium in the world after china you sound like a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> <laughs> you need to just, just tune in yeah. to CNBC and shut your brain off. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we, the the net zero stuff actually scares me because it's it, it, well, climate change is is kind of a cult in and of itself. Yeah. You know, because th that's also a thing where people aren't willing to listen at all to people with opposing viewpoints, and that if you do, you are now a climate denier. Mm. Mm. Just like how if you were kind of like, hey, what's going on with these mRNA vaccines? Oh, you're anti-vax. Like, oh, what? Mm. What happened there? Mm. How did you sneak that in? Like, what are you saying? Yeah. Like, if you are curious about whether or not all this stuff that you're offering up as a solution is actually willing uh, is that is that actually going to be effective if everybody stops eating meat how much does that change and what are you going to do about china and india and then their output and what how how much uh, co2 is actually in the atmosphere and how much do you need in the atmosphere isn't there a certain amount you need what percentage are we above what we used to be and it turns out it's like it's like 0 0.04 is what we are now and we used to be 0 0.03 and at 0 0.02 plant life starts to die because there's not enough carbon dioxide. It's like, what percentage of, of that is human beings? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. And w what percentage of it is the rest of the world? And what percentage of it are we going to save by ruining everything here in the Western world? Right. Well, so in the UK, we have this obsession about net zero. And I'm like, okay, let's get our emissions down to zero. Let's say Britain produces no carbon emissions mm -hmm. at all. And the ones that we outsource abroad, that's 2% of global carbon emissions. You just fucked our country to make no difference whatsoever to the problem. Well, the big, the big polluter or the big contributor, to it, the biggest by far is China and India. Yeah. They're the two biggest. And if they're going to keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> which they are. Yeah. Which yeah, they are. It seems like what we need to do, I mean, this sounds very simple from a moron like myself. but Is invade need, India and China. <laughs> they need to figure out <laughs> technologies to uh, right. clean the air. Yeah. And that doesn't seem impossible. In fact, there was... There was some talk of a giant skyscraper that acted as an air, air filter and that they were going to install. Remember those, Jamie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See if you can find that. There's talk of construction. It might have been in China. where They were going to build these essentially skyscrapers that were really just giant air filters. And that instead of a skyscraper that housed you know, office buildings or people, mm. it actually housed equipment that just sucked pollution out of the air and filtered it. And you're like, hmm. Maybe that would be, maybe that's it. Maybe that would work. Maybe you could actually capture there it is. The skyscraper sized air purifier is the world's tallest. Wow. So what if they just had those on every block or had those, you know, every, you know, X amount of blocks where they figured out a way to clean the air? Okay, it can reduce pollution in a major metropolitan areas by twenty percent, for example. If, if if we can. Not, oh, okay. not oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. I like to tell my students we don't need to be medical doctors to save lives. Uh, Dr. David Pui, uh, professor of mechanical engineering at the University of Minnesota, and one of the re re one of the researchers. So if they could just reduce air pollution by twenty percent, for example, we could save tens of thousands of lives a year. Okay. Yeah, so this seems like it's about air pollution, but your point about China and India, Joe, is so right, because I was talking to an Indian dude, and he, he told me that the time of partition, this is 1947, when India became independent, average life expectancy in India, Jamie, fact check me if you could, please, but I think it was 37 years, right? Fast forward to today, it's over 80. You think those people are going to give up burning shit to, to live longer? You think they're going to do that? Because I don't think they will. I don't think the Chinese are going to stop making stuff and producing stuff and burning stuff. 
Because well, I don't think the people have a say over there in China. That's true. Yeah. Particularly. <laughs> but That's a big part of it, right? Like, hmm. there's not going to be some movement against the government. Have the same, I've checked both on <clears> the <throat> net zero plan. Yeah. To reach net zero emissions by 2060, the report estimates China needs between U.S. 14 to 17 trillion in addition to investments for green infrastructure and technology in the power and transport sectors alone. It seems like quite a lot of money to me. Yeah. 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 Okay, so it says Xi Jinping said uh, since September of 2020, when China's president Xi Jinping made the pledge to reach net zero by 2060, the country's ministers and locales have been mobilized to devise decarbonization roadmaps for their jurisdictions. Yeah. Maybe they can do that. Maybe they can. I mean, maybe there's technologies mm -hmm. that either haven't been implemented or just theoretical, where they can figure out a way to clean it up without destroying their economy. You know, and that might be possible. I don't know. But it's certain that human beings are having an effect. I mean, the, the, like specifically with pollution mm. and not just that, not just the air. We certainly should be looking at carbon dioxide mm. and certainly should be looking at humans impact. We should also be looking at what the fuck we're doing to the ocean. Yeah, mm. we're yeah, killing yeah. the ocean. We're yeah. filling it up with garbage and literally killing most of the species. We were, we were just talking about the other day that there's they don't really know what the real numbers are, but they think it's estimated that we've killed somewhere in the neighborhood of like 80 to 90 percent of the fish. Yeah. I, what? <laughs> We're just scooping fish out and killing everything. And giant fucking country-sized floating garbage islands. You know, like, what? I mean, the, the, the island in the Pacific garbage patch is bigger than Texas. Texas is bigger than multiple European countries. 